Hi, welcome to Clopia Technical Videos. In this video, we will provide a brief overview and demo of end user automated provisioning capabilities using self service portal and service catalog of Clopia Unified Infrastructure Controller. We will walk through an example service request submission process with end to end provisioning workflow steps. You will also learn about end user post provisioning capabilities such as performing lifecycle management actions and getting complete visibility into resource utilization. In this demo, Krish from Sales Department wants to self provision new Quickress web application to give demos to his clients. And now let's log in as Krish into self service portal. This is Krish self service dashboard. He can submit new requests and also he can look at old service requests. He can look into virtual data centers that he has access to. A virtual data center is basically used to create a logical grouping of computing, storage, and networking resources and associated policies for a given environment. For example, an engineering team may have production staging and QA environments and they may want to dedicate some resources to a specific environment and attach some policies. These can be achieved by creating virtual data center for each environment. Krish can also look into already provisioned virtual machines and he can perform some lifecycle management actions. He can look at the resource limits, whether his group has enough resources for new provisioning requests. Let's go ahead and submit a new service request. Remember, Chris wants to submit this provisioning for QuickRes web server application. Now he needs to specify deployment configuration. He can select which virtual data center this application should be provisioned to. He can also select to provision now or later. He can configure however many days he wants to run this application. In this example, let's select five days and 10 hours. This is very important feature for controlling server sprawl and also to recycle and reuse unused resources. This is it. Here is the summary of the service request and it's ready to submit. Since we submitted this request, let's look at the details of this service request. On the left hand side, you can see all the information about SR, which virtual data center, what is the image template and who submitted it and for how long and who is the approver and what is the projected cost for this provisioning request. And on the right side, you see the series of provisioning workflow steps. Chris started this service request. If budget watch is enabled for this group, it will validate if they have enough budget or not. It will also check resource limits. For resource allocation, it uses CloudSense analytics and allocation algorithms to identify right host servers for provisioning this application. These CloudSense algorithms primarily consider policies defined by admins, current resource utilization and available capacity, and application workload requirements. Identifying right host servers is a critical part of the whole end-to-end -end provisioning workflow because it ensures that all application deployments are in compliance with internal policies set by admins and also for optimum application performance. Once the resource allocation is completed, this service request will be sent for the approvals. After the service request is approved, the provisioning will be completed and then the lifecycle schedule will be set up. And finally, the completed service request notification will be sent to the end user. Since this service request is in queue for approvals, let's go ahead and see one of the completed provisioning requests that Chris submitted before and Chris submitted this one for integration testing with backend application and as you can see all the provisioning workflow steps have been completed. 
and it took from 1619 to 1644 roughly about 25 minutes typically for manual provisioning workflows or in some cases automated provisioning workflows in virtualized environments or range anywhere from a few days to a few weeks This is a consolidated dashboard for any given provision application. Once the application provisioning is completed, end user should be able to perform some lifecycle management actions as well as gets visibility into application performance and usage. Now in this example, Krish is given permission to perform these actions by admins. He can access the application via web access or remote desktop client. He can also customize his own dashboard. Currently, he is monitoring CPU, memory, and network. And if he wants to monitor disk I/O, he can just drag and drop. He can also change the duration of resource trend graphs. End users should be able to customize this dashboard according to their needs. Let me conclude this video by summarizing the end user capabilities of Flopia Unified Infrastructure Controller. We learnt about end user automated provisioning capabilities using self-service portal and service catalog. We walked through how end user can submit service requests and end-to-end -end integrated provisioning workflow steps. We also learned how end user can perform lifecycle management actions after completing the provisioning and also get comprehensive visibility into resource utilization using the dashboard.